Coming to the stage, Dave Carter! Hello. I know what I look like. Like a, like a fat Frederick Douglass. I'll give you the full Frederick if you want, I just... I'll even give you Barefoot Prophet, you know, the one in the frames that no one pays for. A homeless Malcolm Jamal Warner. I get that all the time. A friend of mine had a nerve the other day to say, I look like black Tom Hanks in Castaway. Another friend had a nerve to say, you look like black Bob Ross. Painting happy asses. Like, okay, this is the uh, Piedmont Peach. That's how you make a happy ass. And y'all look too fucking happy. Y'all look happy as fuck. I'm married. I don't know, y'all married? Anyone married? No, good. Keep it that way. Don't get married. Unless you hate having hopes and dreams. If you hate having hopes and dreams, you know. Oh, she looked married. She looked, I was thinking about getting married. Now you made me think twice. No, I'm very... Uh, if you would have told me before this pandemic that it'd be just me, my wife, and my daughter in a space that's about as big as this stage for 460 days, I'm like, <laughs> we're going to be stronger for it. We're going to be great. Relationships. Shit is the worst thing. I, don't get me wrong, I love my wife. I just hate being married to her, real talk. I love my wife. I hate being married to her. And y'all are single, keep it that way because y'all look like y'all found each other. Are you guys quarantine buddies? Are you guys a couple of married? A quarantine marriage? Even better. That's how that shit works. The quarantine happened, everyone had to get their buddy in because you guys stuck for 460 days. 460 days, man. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all, 460 days, I washed my hands about 1,398 times. <laughs> brushed my teeth, not a lie, 420 of those 460 days I brushed my teeth. I showered 40 times in uh, 460 days. I'm like, why do, who do I have to impress? I'm married, I don't need to impress nobody. Thought the funk would keep her off, but those quarantine relationships, Man, y'all got caught in that shit. I'm, I'm so sorry, because that's how that worked out. You got quarantine relationship that turned into a quarantine marriage. Like, we're just going to get married now. Let's just get married. We know each other now. Those little quirks that were cute in the beginning. Like, oh, what do you want to do? I don't know. Do, the, do that goddamn wiggle one more goddamn time. Wiggle like that one more. I, I dare you. I double dog dare you. Led to quarantine babies. People had quarantine babies and shit. They're like, oh, well, we didn't do it out of boredom. Oh, it just came naturally. That's the baby's name. <sighs> Led to quarantine divorces. That's coming out now that we're coming out of the thing. Oh, <laughs> quarantine divorce. We're getting separated right after all of this. Quarantine divorces started happening. I feel bad for the pets because people were adopting pets left and right during the quarantine. Some of those pets are going back now. You know? You know that first girl you started dating at the beginning break before the quarantine hit? That emo chick you were dating, you got the snake, you got brought a snake to your house? You take that snake right the fuck back. That snake goes back. But that girl you were with the whole time, I'm like, let's get a pet, let's get a pet, let's do a pet. Baby, let's not, let's get a pet, you know, for the quarantine. Taking those pets back and you break up with that girl. And now you gotta go in the house. This is called a chihuahua uh, champ. Champ's at the house. That ch Champ was never your dog. Champ never liked you. Champ is her dog. You gotta come in, he's always biting at your heel. You come in the house, you gotta tell that dog his mama's gone. You come in the house like, okay, Champ, look, uh... Yip, 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 yip. I'm like, okay, Champ, look, um... Your mama not coming back. It's just me and you now. We're gonna make this work. You get him a little leather jacket because he's always shaking. You wanna give him some self-esteem and shit. You wanna know about himself. You take him to that park every day because that's your dog now. That's your dog. You walk, I mean, they, him shaking his little leather bomber jacket all the way through the park. That's your dog. You lose a grandparent during the quarantine, you know, Lord forbid, but you know, for any reason that they die, they all of a sudden you got to take in Spike, her dog, or, or he's better known as Uncle Spike. 
because it's your grandma's dog. It's not your dog, it's your grandmama's dog. It's your grandmama, your parents, aunts and uncles, Spike, then you. <laughs> you got Spike there and they, you know, come on Spike, let's go outside, let's go walk, let's get that, you know. And Spike just looking at you like, uh, you misunderstood, I am Uncle Spike, I'm your uncle. And why am I going outside? I don't go outside at your grandmama's house. Why am I going outside at your house? And you better start giving me that human food I like. Real talk. I mean, don't get it twisted. This quarantine has been good for a lot of people and a lot of things. I, and my wife and I have learned how to make this work. I love her so much. I write a list on how much I love my wife and I hate being married to. I'm going to read it for you right now. Love my wife. Hate being married to her. I'm going to write a list every day. I'm going to read it for you. Why I Hate Being Married by Dave Carter. <clears throat> <laughs> My wife cooks too good, I'm getting fat, no longer hungry for the struggle. <laughs> she cares about my well-being, where I'm at, who I'm with. Bitch, you have all my stuff. <laughs> I will be home eventually. <laughs> my wife wants to have sex with me all the time. I told you what I look like already, you already know that part. But we had to figure out a way to do that on Zoom because you know, when you marry, I've been married for 12 and a half years. 12 and a half years. And you know, I have, wife, I have sex with my wife, thank you. I have sex with my wife you know, for her you know, annual review. I pull out her paperwork for her anniversary. I pull out her paperwork for the annual review. So you know, we said, oh, Cynthia, Cindy, uh, which do you prefer? Uh, just sit down, I got some good paperwork here. Pull it out of the box. Oh, a lot of, a lot of room for improvement. That's how you start a fight when you're married. Because you fight about absolutely nothing all the fuck. If you're not married, don't do it because you will fight about absolutely nothing all the time. And I'm a man, I'm a grown man. My whole thought in the whole situation is I'm like, oh, we're going to argue. Queensberry rules. I twist my mustache. I'm like, hello, let's just argue about the garbage. <laughs> and she's like fucking Mike Tyson in the back of the room on the other side, just pacing back and forth and shit, just looking at you. Pacing back and forth. I'm gonna bite your motherfucking ear off. And I'm gonna talk in it all night long. We found a way to get through it. She got her, she's got her annual bump for her, her raise. We have sex again. Uh, we found a way to do it on Zoom. We do sex on Zoom now, it's good. Yeah, I'm in one room, she's in another room, it's great. I'm like, don't even turn the screen on, honey. It's okay, don't turn the screen on. Just listen to the sounds. I just close the laptop and I'm like, let's see what's on Netflix. <laughs> Is it good for you, baby? Is it good? Okay, good. That shit works. We got a beautiful daughter. We got a beautiful... Yeah, thank you. My wife is very white from Wisconsin. I'm very black from Chicago. We have a beautiful biracial child. This bitch, I mean, sorry. Never call a small child a bitch, but this motherfucker though. Um, would take her to Hollywood parties and everything, because you know, Hollywood, you know, everyone's got kids now. And she would like, you know, be with all the other kids and all the white parents, God bless you white parents, it's so cute. They're like, River, don't go, don't, River, don't. He'll come back. Rain, Rain, don't touch anything, don't touch anything. He's just expressing himself. Let my daughter think about touching some shit, doing some shit. Black dad, I'm like, I'm like, hey! Come here, come here. Don't you know I could kill you? You try to touch these white people's stuff, you know, they're gonna try to get you on any, they're gonna try to get me on anything. I could kill you, make a whole new you, give them all your stuff. Okay, you understand each other? Okay, daddy loves you. <laughs> go play, go play. <laughs> But I forgot about all the little white kids that are in the room that are watching me. They're like, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> and one kid said, he looked like a fat version of Shaft. <laughs> but in the pandemic, we all had to learn how to entertain ourselves because we watched all the Netflix. We watched all the streaming. For me, I found a way to entertain myself with voices in my head. And this is a bit I called Sam Elliott for beer. I hope you don't mind. <clears throat> I'm a man. And men drink beer. And that beer for me is Budweiser. <laughs> Budweiser beer. <laughs> Damn, that's good. 
Today is a Sunday, and on Sunday is men watch beer and drink football. My beer is made with barley, hops, rice, and mountain spring water from that tap in the back. Budweiser beer. <laughs> Budweiser. So, my wife and kids have moved out, and when a man's got time on his hands, well, he masturbates. But there's always time for a cold one. So when I'm rubbing one out with the left, I'm reaching for a cold one with the right. God bless Budweiser. <clears throat> Budweiser and masturbation, God bless him. Blue. My favorite color is blue. Budweiser. You ever been hunting? You, young man, you know, when you go hunting and there's a bear behind you, let the bear do what the bear is going to do. Then run to your cooler and pour it all on yourself, save for one beer. That beer is for reminiscing. Budweiser and bear fucking, God bless it. Budweiser. You ever been to prison? <laughs> well, when you get there, there'll be a man just as handsome as you staring right back at you, and he might pull out a blade, a knife, a blade. And he'll say, dance, gringo, dance. And you get up, and you just start to wiggle it around and do everything you need to do to leave nothing to chance. And leave it all out there on the floor. You put it out there, and you... Thank you. You put it out there and you sit back down and he'll say, good job, gringo. He'll hand you a beer and you look him right in his eye and you say, I don't drink fucking Tecate, Mateo. <laughs> Budweiser. <laughs> you know, steak's what's for dinner. And steak's good with smoke. Good smoke on a steak makes a steak what it is. But that smoke's even better when it comes off your ex Leslie's house as you watch it burn to the ground. <laughs> Call me back, Leslie! <laughs> Only you can stop forest fires. <laughs> Budweiser. <laughs> Man. That's a good beer. <laughs> Why are you guys all looking at me? I've been drinking this whole goddamn time. You ever wonder about existence, though? Like if we're just a speck of sand on... You ever run out of beer in the middle of your set and people were just kind of watching you, you watch them, they watch you, and you realize that uh, maybe there's other things in life. <laughs> no, I haven't either. I drink Budweiser. There's always a Budweiser standing by. I'm Dave Carter, guys. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Appreciate you all for being here. Have a great night. This has been a Funny Media Group production.